What's up, everybody? Savala Sachs here. I want to start up a spotlight series where I focus on one individual that's doing something really special or has done something really special. And I basically just dedicate the entire video to this individual's accomplishments. This spotlight, today's spotlight is going to highlight a gentleman by the name of Ronald McNear. So I can remember in January of 1986, I was in sixth grade, still in elementary school. And I remember when I got to school, the teachers were really excited. They were really just buzzing about something. And it turns out that a teacher, Krista McCulloch, got to go into space with a team of six other astronauts. And I thought that was so incredibly special that a teacher got to be an astronaut and go into space and do like space stuff or low Earth orbit, if you want to be technical about it. But that was just really exciting. Unfortunately, as we all know, the mission failed and all uh, members on board the shuttle lost their lives. I recently, just a few years ago, found out about some other individuals that were on that mission. And one of which was, of course, Ronald McNear. Now, Ronald McNear was a fascinating individual who, if you can't have guessed already, was also a saxophone player. When he was in high school, he was a very accomplished musician and football player, and he was offered a scholarship in music and also in sports. But he chose to turn that down and pursue his real true love of science. Now, when I was in college, if I had taken the astronomy class my first year that I took my fifth year, <laughs> this book here, I still actually have this book from 1997 when I took this class. Um, for sure, I would have double majored in music and in some field of science. Now, when I was in high school, I didn't really think about majoring in music. It took a couple of things that happened and I was like, I'm going in that direction, but I almost certainly would have majored in some field of science. But getting back to Ronald McNair, he was an MIT graduate, a doctorate specializing in lasers. I think that laser technology is absolutely spectacular, especially since last year in 2022, one of the biggest breakthroughs in fusion technology happened. I'm going to generalize the process by which the fusion actually takes place, but it involves a bunch of lasers, not unlike what was seen in Spider-Man 2, to basically heat this atomic core. And essentially, you get more energy out of it than you put into it. Uh, this blows my mind. Spotlighting Ronald McNair, he was the first person to actually play a saxophone in outer space. In 1984, he was on a mission. He had a curved soprano sax. And I thought this was absolutely fascinating. Now, I know just recently there was a French dude who played like the French national anthem in outer space, which is just cool. I just think this is cool. But I had no idea that there was a guy who had done this in 1984. So in 1986, what he was going to do was actually use today technology back then via Skype. If you want to increase the quality of your saxophone tone, ladies and gentlemen, I do have my saxophone sound development book that is available for all saxophones. And I also have my altissimo books that are available for alto and tenor saxophone. You can check those out in the description below via PayHip. <laughs> He was going to play this live feed from space on his saxophone with a band that was going to be playing live. And we would have this concert of a dude in space playing with a live band. This completely blew my mind. I'll let you guys do some more research and find out all the videos and stuff like that here. But unfortunately, we had the Challenger mission failure 
So they wanted to do a concert to pay tribute to him. And they got one of our most beloved saxophone players, Kirk Whalum, to fill in and do that concert with them. And they did like a tribute to him. It's it's a nice, it's kind of like out and spacey. It has kind of a outer space vibe to the song. Um, I just thought to myself, like, man, how come... How come nobody's talking about something like this? I just recently did a video talking about my all-time favorite saxophone players, my personal favorites. And you know what? This guy definitely gets just a special list on there. I'm trying to find more and more recordings of him, try and find out who knew him and if there's other recordings and stuff that he's on. But he's definitely in my top 20 of favorite saxophone players. Now, one of the things that I was trying to do a couple of years was really spotlight really famous people that also wound up playing the saxophone or at the very least, they were like accomplished musicians. Like, for instance, Mike Huckabee, a bass player. You know, he's actually have him out there playing bass on some stuff. Obviously, Bill Clinton, when I was a kid going to college, turning 18, being old enough to vote and seeing Bill Clinton on the Arsenio Hall show playing the blues, playing saxophone. I was just like, oh, my goodness, this guy is going to be president. That kind of blew my mind, especially as an introduction going from high school into college. And that was just amazing to me. So I see a lot of discussions on the Internet, YouTube about the price of college, the price of a higher education and Is it worth it to get a degree in music, specifically in jazz, when these university tuition fees can exceed like over $100,000 for a four-year degree? And ultimately, the value of something is simply going to be determined by what people are willing to pay for it. Now, I walked away from college with less than $20,000 worth of debt. I graduated in 97 and still it took me a long time to pay that off. I'm not going to get into that. But looking now and I see some of these schools, they cost at least out of state tuition for a lot of places. You're looking at around 25 grand four years. You're looking at one hundred thousand dollars. What is the value of something like that? Is it worth it? Just let me say this. The biggest, in my opinion, the two biggest things you can get from going to college is being in the community of like-minded musicians where you have all these people who are around you that are geared toward the same ideals and also your ability to make connections. If you got the new hot piano player out there, Keys McGee's, and he's in the Northeast Ohio area, man, that's where everybody wants to be in the same way. Like if you got picked up in Miles band, you was a somebody after that. I mean, you got to be where the action is. And if that means going to college, paying high tuition fees. Ultimately, this is the kind of thing you're going to have to work out for yourself. But it's hard for me to say that going to college isn't worth it. But when I see some of these top schools, man, top music schools where, you know, you're looking at coming out of school with a four year degree at two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars, man. Ugh. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, I just felt like I wanted to highlight this dude and his accomplishments and give you an opportunity to be able to pursue and enjoy his accomplishments. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for you. Thanks for tuning in. See ya. If you like this kind of content and you want to support the channel, if you want to help the channel grow, you can buy me a piece of cake. It's like a Kickstarter, Patreon type of program, but you make a small donation and every little bit helps a lot. Thank you.